Welcome to today's Global Connections program. I'm Bill Miller. What role can artists, through their artistic creations, do to promote world peace and international understanding? What is one artist doing through the Nation of Nations painting to help achieve this goal? We'll be back in just a moment to talk about these and other important issues. Welcome back to our program. Today we're going to take a look at the role that artists can play in helping people to better understand international issues and to really promote international cooperation and understanding. My guest is someone who has a very interesting painting that works towards this goal. My guest today is Marjorie Guyon. Ms. Guyon, a native of New York and formerly a student at Hampshire College in Am Amherst, Massachusetts, USA, is an internationally renowned artist who was inspired by a visit to the United Nations to launch a major 10-panel art presentation titled The Nation of Nations. Marjorie Guyon, welcome to Global Connections Television. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being with me today. Marjorie, let's talk about the Nation of Nations. Give us a little bit of an overview. We're going to go to, the, to a video in a few minutes, but give us a little bit of a, an overview of the Nation of Nations project and why you decided you wanted to do this very unique painting. Well, Nation of Nations is a project basically about transformation. It's about how we get from one place to another, basically how we move from the body to the spirit. And um, I've been an exhibition artist for 20 years, and I started thinking about what if you did something rather than to go into somebody's house? What if you did something that could go basically into the world? So. It's 10 panels, it has a language of childhood, it has international languages, and um, it has the universal language of mathematics. So it's mm -hmm. a big pot. It's, yeah. It certainly is. You've got quite a, quite a stew cooking mm -hmm. at that point. Mm -hmm. Now, what was your motivation for doing this? I mentioned in the opening that you had visited the UN several years ago. Uh, was that part of the motivation for being involved in this? Or was you, you also were involved in Trick or Treat for UNICEF, I think. Well, I grew up in New York. Uh -huh. And, you know, we would run around uh, mm -hmm. gathering candy and gathering pennies for UNICEF. And um, so... The UN, when you grow up in New York, the UN is part of your life. And I went on a class trip here when I was 11 years old, and I sat in the General Assembly room, and I listened, I turned the dial, and flipped it to all these different languages, and everybody was saying the same thing in a thousand voices. And I just thought, everybody wants to know, can you see me? Can you hear me? Am I alone? And, you know, you plant a seed in a childhood. You don't know where it's going to grow. But I think that the seed for this project was planted on that trip to the UN. It certainly was. Well, let's, we've been talking about this 10-panel painting that you did. It's very interesting. And it would be, I think, if our viewers could see it, it would certainly give them a better idea of what we're talking about. So we have a little over a three-minute video on this. And we're going to go to the video, and then we'll come back and talk about it. But let's go to the video. Perfect. Hello, I'm Marjorie Guyon. I remember going to the UN when I was young. Spellbound in the General Assembly Hall, I could hear a hundred languages translated into one voice. In that spirit, I've created this project, Nation of Nations. In a time where we are divided along every possible line, I've made a project whose singular purpose is to unify locally, regionally, nationally, and internationally. I believe in the power of beauty. I believe in the power of art. And I believe underneath all our divisions, we are yearning to be connected with one another in a meaningful way. This project asks one central question. 
How can we form a more perfect union? We can address this at home, in our schools, across our cities, and across our countries. For not only are we a nation of nations, we are a nation among nations. Like statues from ancient Greece, the figures in the 10 panels that comprise Nation of Nations are unnamed and unknown. They are meant to represent the human form, us, without the entanglements of gender, race, and religion. Across the figures are fragments from the anthems America the Beautiful and My Country Tis of Thee. As a child, I remember the feeling of being embraced and protected. We have to give the same feeling to all our children here in America and beyond. Adjacent to the head is the prayer, Have Mercy on Us, which appears in 10 languages, Cherokee, Chinese, Spanish, Swahili, Russian, Haitian Creole, English, Arabic, Hindi, and Hebrew. And finally, the universal language of mathematics is interwoven through the images. The way that numbers identify and define us, who and what we are, how much and how little we have, and the way numbers have been used as tattoos to separate us. At first glance, across the room, across any distance or boundary, I see you as unknown. Like the statues, you are a stranger to me. How can I transform my fear of the unknown? I have to see you within me, for then my heart is open. And this is the essence of Nation of Nations. Marjorie, that's a fascinating set of 10 panels, and I'm sure our viewers would like to see it even closer up than what they did, but this gives us an idea of what we're talking about. You've got, as you mentioned before, you have a lot of items in the stew that you put into the pot. Let's kind of look at each one individually for a moment. The international languages. You have 10 languages, Chinese, Spanish. How did you, Arabic, how did you decide to pick these particular languages? And given that there are over 6,000 around the world. <laughs> Well, I wanted to start with um, an indigenous person's language, uh, so I put Cherokee on my country, and I tried to hit the continents, basically, so, um, and the major religions. So there's, and, and really it's, what it's meant to say, it's not conclusive in any way. It's just, you know, Hebrew, Hindi, Arabic, English, Spanish. Uh, Haitian Creole because the, the earthquake in Haiti was going on. That's all I was hearing about on the news and I just, so Haitian Creole got in. And um, Chinese for Asia. And um, so, you know, I am not a very thorough thinker. I'm a, you know, I'm like, this will be good, this will be good, this will be good. So, you know, people, but the people whose languages are in there have been really happy to see them, you know, it's mm -hmm. people like to to see your own tongue in a place where you don't expect to see it is a, a happy surprise. Mm -hmm. That's what I've seen over and over again. Like people are not expecting to see their language. Mm -hmm. Now, if our viewers would like more information on this, they can go to marjoriegayon.com, your website at mm -hmm. M-A-R-J-O-R-I-E-G-U-Y-O-N.com, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. or they could probably just Google Nation of Nations yes. and they would come up with it regardless. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that some folks would like to take another look at it and uh, maybe ponder it a little uh, slower than what we did in that, that brief overview. Absolutely. You mentioned the language of childhood. What, explain that concept. What is the language of childhood and how is that reflected in your painting? Well, a language of childhood, we all grew up somewhere. It's everywhere in the world there are right now children growing up and their mothers are singing them to sleep or they're going to school and they're singing the anthem of their country or they're singing in the schoolyard with their friends. And so for me, my language of childhood was hand on my heart singing My Country Tis of Thee and America the Beautiful, so much so that those songs are mixed in my mind. And so I said, this is my language of childhood and it takes me back. That's The language of childhood takes you back to a time, well, A, of innocence, but also of belief. 
and of safety. So that was the reason for using a language of childhood. It's like, I want to take us all back to a time when we, we had were more faithful. I'll just put it like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it certainly is comprehensive. I'm curious about mathematics. You, I can see language, religion, you brought those in. How, and of course, mathematics is international also, but how, how did you decide on the mathematic, mathematical symbols that you used, and why did you decide to bring mathematics in? I'm assuming you had other choices of things to bring in to the, to the paint. You couldn't put everything in there, but how did you decide on that? Well, mathematics is a universal language, but also mathematics numbers are a zip code, phone number from childhood, street address, barcode, social security number the branding of the slaves, the tattoos on the arms of the Jews. Numbers are interwoven into us the same way songs are interwoven. Mm -hmm. that, so it was just like, this is going to take you somewhere. It, it certainly does. The, this whole concept, this is, you're a U.S. citizen. This was done, it's being, it's being shown right now at the University of Kentucky, Lexington, Kentucky, USA. But this is really, an, it, it's an, a national project to some degree, but it's truly an international project. This could be in any capital, in any country, in any place in the world. It, it, could it not? Absolutely, because what the project is really about is there, it's ten figures. It's the same figure in two different poses. But it is us without the entanglements of race, religion, and gender. So all of us, no matter where we live, we are living within this human form that holds the spirit. And, you know, like I realized when I was 11, we are not that different. The ways that we separate ourselves from each other are just really a result of these entanglements. So it could easily go, I mean, it could go anywhere because anywhere it would go, there would be another language of childhood. And, you know, it, it, it could go anywhere, I mm -hmm. think. Well, you're watching Global Connections Television, which is an independently produced program. The opinions expressed on Global Connections are solely those of the moderator and his guest. We'll be back in just a moment after this important message. My name is Michael Douglas. As a United Nations Messenger of Peace, I look forward to the day when all of us who inhabit this fragile planet are free from the threat of nuclear weapons. That's why I'm calling on all young artists to use their creative talents to imagine what that world would be like, a world free of nuclear weapons. The United Nations and the Harmony for Peace Foundation have jointly launched the 2012 Art for Peace Contest. This contest is open to children and teens across the globe. Wherever you live, we want to hear from you. Whether you paint or draw, use watercolors or acrylics, pencils or crayons, the Art for Peace Contest wants you to use your imagination to express your vision for a world free of nuclear weapons. Art is the universal language. Art speaks to our hearts and minds. Art can make a difference. And so can you. Thank you. Welcome back to our program. Today we're taking a look at a very interesting painting, The Nation of Nations, and a painting that was really inspired by a visit to the United Nations several years ago. My guest today is the artist who did the painting. Marjorie Guyon, a native of New York and formerly a student at Hampshire College in Amherst, Massachusetts, USA, is an internationally renowned artist who was inspired by a visit to the UN to launch a major 10-panel art presentation titled the Nation of Nations. Marjorie, we were talking about the Nation of Nations painting, and I mentioned earlier that our viewers could go to MarjorieGuyon.com if they would like more information, or they could just Google Nation of Nations. Let's talk a little bit more about the, the painting and the inspiration that you had to, to develop this. It, this is something that uh, it started possibly at the United Nations. When did you decide to really implement it and to say, I'm going to do something and put it on canvas and move forward with it and complete it? Well, I started it about two and a half years ago. And what happened was I had this idea that I just call a bigger room. And um, I'm an exhibition artist. And I thought, what would happen if instead of putting a painting in someone's living room or in a gallery, you could make the room bigger? And what kind of thing would work in a big room? And it would have to be a piece that really talked about the human spirit. And so the idea for this is that it, 
it can go into a space and it can put a spirit into this big room, which could be our country or our world. So we're really, this big room can be wherever you want it to be. It could be the United States, it could be Ecuador, or it could be the a continent or the entire world. Absolutely, absolutely. And what the images really are supposed to do is they're supposed to be a trigger for thinking about really how can I act from my spirit? How can we activate our spirits and come towards each other? Mm -hmm. So we can go from the micro to the macro right. and absolutely. cover it. Absolutely, that's, absolutely, that's absolutely. That's very true. Before the program we were talking and you had mentioned that uh, certain phrases that you liked and one was when you when Egypt sneezes we the world gets a cold we've also heard about when the United States has a financial problem the world gets a cold it has pneumonia or something but uh, explain that go into greater detail on that what is the linkage between let's say a country that has a particular situation occur and how it affects other countries well the, the I mean I've, the way that I see it is, is that we keep forgetting the fact of how interconnected that we are. And what affects you affects me. And what affects you affects me in this little room right here. And as that room goes out, the ripples, we're absolutely interconnected. I mean, this has to do with the stewardship of the earth. It has to do with how we educate our children. It's every single thing that we do, we're going one way or another. And it just feels to me like this is a time where if you have something and you, you know that you're expressive in it, you know you're effective, you might as well put it mm -hmm. out and see, like, let's get those ripples going in another way. Mm -hmm. And as you look at these issues, you look at climate change, global warming, humanitarian issues, you look at these natural disasters that have taken place perhaps in Haiti, you mentioned the horrific earthquake that took place January 12th, 2010, I guess it was, the flooding in, uh, in uh, Pakistan, just on across the board. And we are truly living in an interdependent world. There is no doubt about it that these issues that take place or these events that take place in other parts of the world affect people in those regions, but they certainly affect us in the United States or people who may live in China or, or wherever it may be in Argentina, or no matter where it is, that we're all connected. And the, the, how do you think we can get a better grasp on this interconnectedness. Do you think that we are moving in that direction, people are starting to realize that there's more of an interdependence in this world, or is there some way we can help people better realize it? We have to heal the spirit. When we heal the spirit, we heal the world. So that means I have to be able to see you, and that's really what this project is about, is that how can I see through how you appear to see that we're really connected to each other, that we're one person in a seven billion different bodies. There's one spirit. So you start looking, then there becomes no other. There's only us. There is, you know, there's no them. It's all us. And once it's all us, then we matter to each other. Mm -hmm. That's the essence of it. And there are, there are national boundaries, there are regional boundaries, state boundaries, counties, cities, whatever the case might be. Absolutely. But it's all still one interconnected world. It's one big blue marble and we're all on it together and right. we have to work to make sure that we preserve it, especially in this area of climate change. I mean, there are a lot of other problems, but this is the one that can affect everybody on the planet. Some of the others might be a little more isolated, but we really have to work in this direction, especially in climate change, I would think. And of course, that's been a number one priority for the United Nations, for Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, and not only his first five years, but now into his second five-year term. But also, there are so many other groups around the world that are, are focusing on this. Do you have any plans maybe to do something on climate change or uh, some of the uh, more specific issue in the future? Do you have something on the drawing board that you would like to do? Well, the first panel is about stewardship which is really what climate change is about. I mean, it's the My Country panel and it's about stewardship. And there are ways that that could be developed into an entire project in and of itself. To begin to plant that seed of how do we care for the planet? How do we care for our bodies? How do we care for each other? It's all stewardship. You, and you implant that into people that it's sacred. It's all sacred. Then, um, I mean, I. All I want to do is keep working on these projects. It's just the most exciting thing to actually be able to bring something 
Mm -hmm. Now, if we think back to the horror of World War II and the, the horrific situation occurred then, over 60 million people lost their lives, hundreds of millions more were dispossessed, people, there were uh, people who were injured uh, during World War II. It was just uh, the most horrific international conflict that we've ever had. It, it, can we learn some lessons from World War II and bring them up to today? And what could be the role, perhaps, of artists? I know you can't speak for all artists, but what can we learn from World War II, from the, from the devastation that took place, as far as maybe what artists can do to help remind us what happened? We think of Guernica with Pablo Picasso, a famous painting of the, the devastation in the, in the Basque region, region in Guernica. But is there something that artists can do to focus on this? Well, here's what I would say, <coughs> is that I don't think that there's any any culture, any group of people that have not at some time experienced enormous pain and suffering and loss. But to me, and, and yes, Picasso did a beautiful job, no question about it, but to me it is, as an artist, how much beauty can you bring? Do you know, as, as horrible as war or genocide or, do you know, earthquake, all of the disasters, to me the role of the artist is I'm going to tell you what you might not remember right now, and that is that there's more beauty than you could ever imagine. And we have to live in that beauty. We have to hold that with us as much as, like, every race holds to them what has happened, because you carry it in your blood. It's in us. What has happened to everybody is in all of us. But it's the job I see that we're supposed to, my job is to make the world more beautiful, and that is through saying, look, this is how you do it. And it's very, very important to do that. And this is, I, I think we all have a role to play as, as we move forward. We have, a, first off, in my opinion, a moral obligation to leave the world in a better situation than we found it. And this goes back to stewardship, right. to make a contribution to help create that better world. And this is something we, we need to do. But we all have this obligation to try to really utilize some of our talents in this area to involve other people and to get them involved in these particular issues because we're all in it together. We can't, Absolutely. we can't escape it. Absolutely. And we all rise together or we fall together. It's, right. We're going to sink together or we're going to be successful together. And this is certainly what uh, we're trying to do in, in this discussion and what you're trying to do with your painting. What has been the feedback from the, from the general community, from other artists, your colleagues, and that type of thing? Uh, what kind of feedback have you gotten on, on this? What I think is a very unique painting. Well, people like it. Um, <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> but, that pretty well sums it up. <laughs> but what's been really interesting are the partnerships that are starting to develop from it. Because to put out an idea, like to get those ripples moving, you actually have to do that with partnerships. And so, you know, the bigger the shoulders, the more able you are to disseminate a concept. In the end, what this project really is, is a concept in visual form. So the, the panels, they had to be beautiful to attract your attention, to, you know, because beauty is a good thing. I mean, people want to look. But it's, what it's really about is how can I shift your thinking? And so what's been probably the most exciting, I mean, it's always nice to know that people like things, but what's been the most exciting is beginning to develop these partnerships with other organizations that really have the ability to carry this message beyond any particular community into many, 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 many communities. You mentioned partnerships. I brought to mind the United Nations Millennium Development Goals, which were adopted in 2000 to reduce abject poverty by 50% by 2015 over a 15-year period to promote primary school education for all primary school students, reverse the AIDS pandemic. But number eight was to promote partnerships economic partnerships, cultural partnerships, that type of thing. And this, I think, is very, very critical. How do you see maybe some of those other goals being brought into this? I, I know you probably weren't thinking about the UN Millennium Development Goals as a package, but the concepts of poverty, of health issues, those types of things, they, they factored into to your painting, did they not? The way that, I mean, to take this project, the way that the UN has the ability, the, it, the UN would be a wonderful partner because it is everywhere in the world. And so you could bring this project to children in Africa. 
you could take these concepts everywhere. And I mean, you could take this project to people that were living in extreme poverty, but you, you can all, I mean, because this is a project of the spirit, what's going on on the outside is not the essential thing. It's what's going in on the inside. And you have people that, if you can give that feeling of safety and of fullness to somebody, it, that's what I believe will start to shift the climate in the world. Mm -hmm. you, I agree. Now, our mid-show ID had Michael Douglas on, and he had a very, he's a very strong proponent of reduction of nuclear weapons, the flow of illegal arms, that type of thing. And of course, he was challenging the students to get involved in this art program. Would this be a good idea to get more students to participate in art projects to focus on these issues? Well, that's a lot of that is happening with this project because these kids, you want these little minds. I mean, it was my little mind that came to the UN and got ignited. So it's just like the same way we want our children to eat good food, you know, the whole, like, what is our food issue? Um, we want them to think beautiful thoughts. And so you put things in front of them that are good food for the mind, good food. The, the, absolutely, absolutely we want our children to be thinking right. this way. Well, Marjorie Guyon, it's a very beautiful painting, and I want to thank you for sharing it with us, and thank you for a very interesting and a very informative program. Thank you. I'm Bill Miller. Thank you for joining us on today's Global Connections program.